Hi and welcome back. In the first two parts of this series, I designed the LED PCB for the DMX Spotlight we are building. And the thermal performance was improved by upgrading the heatsink from this black one to this large aluminum extrusion. Now it's time for the next step. Designing the first revision of the control PCB, including the LED driver circuitry, letting us control the light output when receiving DMX data. Overall, the design consists of a STM32F103 microcontroller, powered by a DC to DC buck converter, which steps down the input voltage to a suitable 3.3 volt. And then the most important part, the LED driver, which makes it possible to control the current delivered to the LEDs precisely. As seen on the diagram, I'm planning to run this on a supply voltage of somewhere between 30 and 40 volts. The DMX data for controlling the spotlight will be received with a RS485 interface, which converts the differential DMX signal to a 3.3 volt logic level, which the MCU understands. A dip switch will let the user set the desired DMX address of the unit. Next to it, a small RGB status LED is seen, used to indicate when DMX data is received or an error has occurred. The microcontroller is programmed using an ST-Link via a small STDC14 connector. And finally, a USB-C connector is also added, which might come in handy in future for easier configuration of the spotlight via USB. Let's briefly go through the schematic, starting with the main schematic sheet. In the upper left-hand corner, the input connector for power is shown with reverse polarity and over-voltage protection. Then there's the USB-C connector, also protected with four ESD suppressing diodes found in U101. To the right, the DMX input and output connectors are connected to the RS485 transceiver, changing the DMX signal to a proper logic level for the MCU below. Here, the MCU is shown with all the signals, decoupling capacitors and reset circuitry. On the overview, we can also see how it's connected to the status LED and DMX address dip switch. To the right, the 3.3 volt regulator is seen, which is a basic MC34063 configured as a typical bug regulator. Later in this project, I realized that this IC needs a lot more input and output capacitance to operate reliably. Below the 3.3 volt regulator, you can see a 12 volt regulator grayed out, which was originally supposed to power a cooling fan, but this has been discarded for now. Finally, there is the LED driver circuit, which has a PWM and analog dimming inputs, and an output for the LED board to be connected to. The design has two drivers, making it possible to control two outputs, but for now, just one of them is used. Looking into the LED driver block, we see that it is built around the Texas Instruments TPS92512, which is configured as a bug regulator. Let me know in the comments if you're interested in a video going into more details around the design procedure for this LED driver. Here we see the four layer PCB layout with the two LED drivers on the right, the DMX address dip switch on the bottom and connectors for the DMX signal on the left. In this video, I will not go into much depth about the layout. It will be subject for later videos. The 3D viewer and KiCad lets us view the PCB before ordering it online. The five PCB prototypes just arrived 10 days later and they look great. The first assembly step is to fix the PCB to the table with the help of four other PCBs of the same thickness. Then the solder paste stencil can be aligned on top and finally also taped down. Solder paste can now be applied and to increase the odds of soldering of a working prototype, I will be assembling two identical PCBs. The first component to be placed is the status RGB LED, and for the rest of the SMD components, I will speed up the footage for you. Each PCB is reflown by heating it up from the underside using my hot air gun.
afterwards the PCB can be checked under the microscope and it reveals that not all components were soldered perfectly. Luckily this can be fixed easily by hand afterwards. As the last step all the through hole components and connectors are soldered. A big electrolytic capacitor is added on the input as an afterthought to reduce the voltage ripple and increase the stability of the 3.3 volt regulator. It is time to test the PCB and get some of the subsystems running. First the 30 volt supply is plugged in and the output of the 3.3 volt regulator 3.39 volt is measured which is within a few percent. Next the ST-Link programmer is plugged into the 14 pin connector and we can get started with the firmware for the microcontroller. The status LED is controlled with the setRGB function which is taking a color as a parameter and to test this I've made a small sequence changing the color every other second. Next the LED board can be wired up to the controller board. First the temperature sensor is connected, followed by the two wires for the LEDs. For this first test the analog voltage from the temperature sensor is read by starting the ADC and polling it for the result. This is not the most efficient approach and can be improved by using DMA later on. The following line converts the ADC result to millivolts and then to a temperature according to the transfer function found in the LMT87 datasheet. Using the hot air gun the temperature sensor can be heated up a bit to verify that we are reading out an increasing temperature, which is being printed out via the serial UART connected to the ST-Link. Two lines of code is used to quickly verify that the 9 position dip switch can be read out. The first line reads out the 9 bits followed by a printf statement sending the value to the serial terminal. Each bit is switched on and the values are verified on the right. The current dip switch is a bit cumbersome to use and should be upgraded to one easier to operate by hand without having to use a screwdriver. Finally it's time to get the LED light shining by enabling the two PVM signals going from the MCU to the LED driver circuit. The PWM dimming on the PDIM input of the driver is set to 100% for now while controlling the analog dimming level in 10% steps. The oscilloscope is used to measure and verify the analog dimming signal before and after the low pass filter. First we see the digital PVM signal stepping through increasing duty cycle steps. Moving the probe to the output of the low pass filter, we can see how the PWM signal is smoothed to an average voltage, which sets the output current of the LED driver. And after zooming out, we can see how this voltage develops over time. Here the step size is decreased to make the light output smoothly fade. As one last thing for this third part of the DMX Spotlight series, I wanted to implement a simple thermal throttling algorithm turning down the light output if the temperature rises above a set threshold. First the output is simply halved if the temperature goes above 60 degrees Celsius, and then I made it proportionally dim the light according to how warm the board is to avoid the hard stepping down you just saw. This concludes this video with a functioning LED board and driver with thermal protection. Next we will look into receiving DMX data and thereby get closer to a working prototype for the DMX controlled LED spotlight. Thanks for watching and see you soon.